Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. All right, so we've had the excitement of Carson Wentz um, being traded to the Colts. I think um, the Colts did a hell of a trade, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think getting Carson Wentz in the fold for a number three pick and a conditional second or first. If he ends up being, you know, what he was in 2018, they got a steal. If he wasn't, well, you know, chances of getting quarterbacks right now are slim and none. And quite frankly, with the Colts, look at it and say, we've got a really good team. Um, Phillip Rivers actually had a pretty good season for them last year. They're going to need uh, Wentz to be at least as good as Philip Rivers was this year and probably better to get to the Super Bowl. But the reality is there's not a lot of quarterbacks around. Um, what I actually came on here about is about my quarterback. You know, we've been dealing with other people's issues and things like that. There's other quarterbacks. Now, the next shooter drop should probably be Sam Darnold. Um, and I bet the Jets are looking at the compensation that the uh Colts gave up for Carson Wentz are probably looking and saying, hmm, you know, maybe we can get a cup, maybe a one and a two, or maybe we can get a couple of twos. But the compensation definitely dropped off compared to what Matthew Stafford got. So the question will be is, somebody make that move. The Bears are still looking for a quarterback. Uh, the 49ers might be as well, as well as some other teams and so on. Uh, and there's still, of course, Deshaun Watson. But Dak Prescott, we still have that situation going. The NFL has gone through this morning and said that it will be a minimum of $180 million for the salary cap. It will not go any lower than that, so that's already $5 million. It probably will go up even more from there, giving teams relief. And this, I think, is going to be the beginning of teams now all of a sudden starting to make some moves so that way they know roughly what kind of money they're going to be working with. But our quarterback, Dak Prescott, we know that he'd went to the Dominican Republic um, with his uh, girlfriend. Um, after the Super Bowl, we had heard that Dak Prescott had a second surgery. In fact, I talked with um, my orthopedist. I went to my orthopedist yesterday, and I asked him a couple of questions about um, that kind of surgery. So let's watch that clip real quick, and we'll come back. All right, I'm here with the greatest orthopedic surgeon that I know, and I had Dr. Ain, who was one of the pioneers of the scope. Dr. Thompson here is the guy who's been doing the chicken grease injections in my other knee, and now this knee is bothering me. And I was asking him about the injury for Dak Prescott, where he had the compound fracture and put together, and then, of course, being scoped afterwards. Do you think that the initial injury would be something that would come back through and scope? No, that's, that, I, I would bet that's entirely unrelated. Like usually for an ankle scope, it's from scarring or prior injury or cartilage injury and not so much with a tibia fracture, that's usually all there is. You fix that and it may be that they took advantage of him being down for a while and this is a good time to do some other maintenance work at the same time. Well, the operation happened in October. Um, we're seeing pictures of him without crutches. He was actually in a beach on the Dominican uh, Republic with and you can see the ankle and you you see a bulge on the side of it a little bit um that's probably just the scar tissue and still the initial swelling i suspect so yeah. um what's the typical time frame on something like that you think? Um, getting back to playing after an ankle scope well scope and fracture uh, fracture for uh probably six months okay well, you're uh, in good shape then ankle scope you know, a month or two, probably two. Okay. All right. I got to get let him work on my knees because his time is valuable. But I appreciate that. Thank you. So that's my orthopedist. Um, I may end up needing to get my right knee scope because there's some something there we can work with. My left one, eventually, he's going to be doing my knee joint replacement. I'm going to try and make it for another four years at least before we have that happen. I don't know how, but we're going to make that happen. So talking to him, somebody who actually does that for a living. Um, I'll take his opinion more so than I will somebody that works at the fan um, who says that they have knowledge about what's going on with Dak. So we had that whole situation. Dak went to the Dominican Republic. We saw him on the beach. We saw him in the pool. It's no open wounds there. Doesn't look like an infection. Looks like there's still maybe some swelling and stuff like that. But, you know, all that's happened. 
And since that time, we've had that blizzard, and it's been hell. I mean, I know yesterday morning there were 3 million people without power, and um, I think this morning it was down to half a million. You know, hopefully they get their power back on, already have it back on. And I've been hearing from some fans that have talked about, you know, they've had no water because the pipes have frozen up, or uh, Jessica, or was it Emily Ann, uh, said the pipes in their house broke, and um, so they don't have water. But right now, there's a boil water alert for, I, I can't remember the numbers, but a lot of jurisdictions have pipes that are frozen. See, it's a little different. Um, Texas just wasn't prepared for this. You know, they're not used to having sub-zero temperatures. You know, here, uh, the frost line is considered 24 inches. Your footings have to be 24 inches at a minimum. You go to Minnesota, it's more like 48. I'm sure Texas, it's like, six inches if that so a lot of the gas line pipes and stuff are above ground or not insulated the pipes you know nobody's worried about insulating pipes up underneath the house because it's not going to get that cold well it did you know that once in a hundred years uh flood type of a thing happened and that's where a lot of people right now who some were already in need um, because of the pandemic a lot of people are out of work and losing their homes a lot of people don't have money for groceries and medication there was already a need before this storm came up. And this is the great thing that one of the great things about a lot of people out there that understand the power that they have to change others' lives. Matthew McConaughey and Dak Prescott um, are encouraged or, or sending supports uh, to purchase meals for individuals and family um, to emergency shelters because they understand, hey, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars can feed thousands of people and make lives better and help people get through in this. And this is one of those things that you have to understand that beyond just what's on the field, Dak does things in the community that helps change others' lives between stand up for cancer, between the football camps, uh, trying to help bring World Cup soccer to the community of 2026, and of course now helping to provide meals. Um, this is one of the things that Russell Wilson um, had done a lot during the pandemic, early on doing different telethons and things, him and Sierra to help uh, raise money for meals and provide meals for people, and that's one of the reasons why he was NFL Man of the Year. The thing I will tell you about is more times than not, you look at guys that are like Dak Prescott that do these kind of things. They are leaders on and off the field, and people listen and respond to them. Roger Staubach is one of those type of guys. Franco Harris. I can tell you from personal experience, Demaris Davis, Calais Campbell, Russell Wilson. These are guys that look beyond themselves and realize I am part of the community. And that's why they're loved. I'm not going to try and throw shade on a Carson Wentz because I don't know what he does as far as charitable work. But see, that's where that leadership comes in. When you get the guys on the team to say, hey, man, we need to look out for such and such, they gravitate, they fall behind, they believe in. And when things are hard, they look towards that person and they believe in them. And that is truly leadership. The Cowboys, I have no idea if they will get a deal done for Dak Prescott, if they will pay him what he should be paid. If they don't, the Dallas Cowboys won't be the only ones losing out. The whole community will lose out without Dak Prescott's um, presence. And that's how I honestly feel. I've seen it happen. I know exactly the type of person he is. And the Cowboys, well, they've been blessed to have him. So I've got some more work to do up in the shop and things. Got rid of all the dust from earlier. And uh, let me thank everybody who did a super chat during our live stream that I was doing when the news of Carson Wentz broke. Um, I'm going to be doing some more, uh, doing a lot of giveaways of the racks and some of the merchandise and things that I have in here. Um, I'm working on raising extra money because I'm trying to get another piece for the studio. I may do it as a GoFundMe or something like that. Um, but um, 
the reason this channel has been able to grow the way it has grown uh, with the different look and the equipment and everything else is because of your guys' support. I appreciate each and every one of you that makes sure that if something's going on, I don't miss it. Uh, I appreciate the thumbs up, the comments, the likes, and uh, the support, the super chats and everything else, and being part of our community. I'm Mark Holmes, and I will see you later.